So what I want to do today with you guys is teach you another way, okay, of finding volume um, using a different technique. And this is, and it depends on how they ask you the question, all right? And this is going to be um, cross-sectional areas. So it's like slices, kind of like um, if you can think of like slices of bread, okay? So they're, they're different slices and the thicknesses of the bread slices. And from that, we can get volume, okay? So here's this curve, right? It's a circle, right? And what we want to do is we're going to drop it flat. So this is going to be like on our desktop. That's how I explained it to my other classes, okay? And then we're going to do this perpendicular to the um, x-axis. So we're going to draw it going this way, okay? Um, and let me show you. So these are chords. So these, what these are going to be, we're going to make squares. And these are all going to be sides of squares. So right when we get to the center of the circle, that's going to be our biggest square. So let me show you four of these squares. Okay, so here's four of them. And so the area of one of them would be side times side right side squared and then the thickness of it and what we're going to do is we're going to start creating these over here at this negative r and go all the way across here to r so i'm going to sweep one of them to show you that so here you're seeing one of them and as we get to the center it's getting the biggest square and then it starts to shrink okay so the solid would look like this so this is creating the solid And if we accumulate, in other words, we sum all of these, all of these, and let me show the solid, that's what, it, that's what it actually looks like. If we add all of these squares up, we're gonna get volume, a volume, okay? And so now you can see it with the square sliding through it, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna look at some different shapes. So this is doing it with squares. So we had to find the area of each of these squares, okay? And accumulate them, all right? And so let me stop this. And let's go to the next one, okay? So here we have the same circle, right? And this time we're gonna draw them perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? So these are gonna be my chords. These, all of these chords, okay, these segments, all right, are gonna form equilateral triangles, okay? So this is one side of an equilateral triangle. Now what's an equilateral triangle? It's a triangle where all three sides are the same length, okay? So here's four of them. Oh, let me drop the y-axis flat. There's four of them, right? So if you if I don't see it, okay, you can see, you won't see, let me show the chords. Let me see, you, we don't even see, I, I clicked on it, we, we you don't even see the triangles because they're so thin, right? And so I'm gonna drop it now, and now we see them, right? Okay, so then we're gonna sweep one of them, and so here's our triangle. So the area of this would be one half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. The solid would look like this as I'm sweeping it across. And again, the, because the base is the biggest right here, right in the center of the circle, that's where we're going to get our biggest um, equilateral triangle. And so this is what the solid looks like. All right, and let's look at another one. So again, same curve, drop the y-axis, show the chords. And this time they're gonna be um, um, isosceles right triangles. Now what's an isosceles right triangle? So that's gonna be a right triangle where the legs are the same length, okay? So here's four of them, okay? So this base right here and this height have to be the same, okay? For it to be an isosceles right triangle and sweep one of them and you start to see the idea of this so what we have to do is find all of these and add them all up and we can do that with an integral so we're going to create the solid and again it's going to have as big as um, isosceles right triangle when we go right through the center of the circle so this is what the solid looks like and we'll reset and then one more that I want to show you guys and it's different okay so we're this time we're going to be perpendicular to the y-axis so now we're going horizontal which means we need equations that are x equals equations so x equals something with y and then the thicknesses instead of being dx they're going to be dy so we're going to do semicircles 
So here's, uh, you can't see them really. Let me drop it flat. Now you can see them. Okay, so here's five of them. So this base, this di this is the diameter of the semicircle. It's in this region um, that we that we created by enclosing um, with all of these different curves or actually straight lines. Okay, so let me sweep one of them. So <clears throat> the biggest semicircle is going to happen right here, back here, and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and at B it actually becomes a point. And this is what the solid would look like. Okay. All right, so let's go back and I'm gonna go over review kind of air, some area formulas that we're gonna need, okay? So as you saw from the animation that we're gonna take a look at volumes of solids by when we know the type of shape that the cross section area is. So we're gonna find the area of the cross section and then it's gonna have the thickness of it and that's what's gonna give us the volume. So this is the thickness of either like a rectangle or a semicircle or a triangle or a square, okay? So, and then it, the, the integral formula is gonna look like this if the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, but if the cross sections are taken perpendicular to the y-axis, then we have to have x equals equations. And then also the thickness isn't gonna be dx, but dy because we're gonna be taking these slices horizontal, okay? All right, so just going over a few area formulas um, for cross sections. So the area of a rectangle, this right here is the base of the, of the rectangle. And then this is the height. And the area of any rectangle is always the base times the height, okay? And a lot of times they will tell you, okay, that you'll figure out what the base is. That's gonna be, that's gonna be in the region. And then they're gonna tell you, oh, the height is twice as big or uh, five times as big or as the base or something like that, all right? Okay, so then we move on to semicircle. Okay, so for a semicircle, I know the area of an entire circle is areas of pi r squared. So that means our area, our semicircle area is gonna be one half pi r squared. Now, what we're gonna wind up having is the diameter is gonna land in our, in our region, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is if we're given the diameter, we know that's the diameter to get the radius, we're gonna to have to take the diameter and divide by two. So this radius becomes D over two squared. So that makes our area formula one half pi times D over two squared, all right? And the D we're gonna get by taking the right minus the left or the top minus bottom, depending on um, whether the cross section is perpendicular to the x axis or perpendicular to the y axis. Okay. All right. Moving on. For a square, okay, so what do we know about a square? It has four right angles, right? And these two sides are the same. So we're going to call this a side, and this is a side. And it's like a rectangle in that the area is you just take this side times this side. So that would be side times side or side squared. Okay, simple, right? How about an isosceles triangle? Okay, so this is the base and this is the height, all right? So here's the base, but if it's an isosceles triangle, that means these two legs are the same length. So if this is the base and this is the height, the height has to be the same as the base. So our area of, of any isosceles right triangle will be one half the base times the height. Well, that would just be B times B or b squared. So the area is one half b squared or b squared divided by two. You can write it that way too. Okay, let's go through and let's now do some problems. So for our first example, okay, let the region R, which is the shaded region, be the area enclosed by the function f of x is equal to 2x squared and g of x is equal to 3x. All right. So this line is g of x is equal to 3x. So that's this one right here. So g of x is equal to 3x. And this is our parabola, the 2x squared. So this right here would be our f of x is equal to 2x squared. Okay, if the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis, so our cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. 
okay so so basically what happens is this right here this link from here top curve to the bottom curve right here is the side of a square and we have to imagine this coming up up out of our out of our paper and the way it would come up right is this length right here would be the same as how high it comes up and that's how big it would be all right so this would be a square right here and what this is is the side of a square okay so right off the get-go okay how long is this side right we need that so to get the side that's how we do we're going to do the top minus the bottom right so that makes sure that this this s is going to be positive okay so our top curve is 3x and then minus our bottom which is 2x squared so i'm putting parentheses just to show the top minus the bottom part okay you wouldn't have to have the parentheses so that means our side it becomes 3x minus 2x squared now we got to find the area of the square okay so that's going to be a of x an area formula right you can use a or a of x and in this case it would be 3x minus 2x squared squared because the area formula for a, a square is area is equal to side squared right so this squares because we're squaring the side all right so now where do we start creating these well we start creating them right here at this intersection point and when are we going to stop it well we're going to stop it right here at this intersection point so what i next i have to do is i have to set up okay um, a system of equations and solve these. So I have to set these equal to each other and figure out when they're going to equal or what X values they're going to be equal to. So 2X squared is equal to 3X. All right. You don't want to divide both sides by X here. Okay. Because you'll lose one of our solutions. Okay. So let me slide this up a little bit. Okay. So what we want to do instead of dividing by X, what we want to do is subtract 3X from both sides. So we wind up with 2X squared minus 3X is equal to zero. So to solve this, we can factor out an X and we'd be left with two X minus three equals zero, which means X is equal to zero or two X minus three is equal to zero, which we add three and divide by two, we get X is equal to three halves. So this point right here, okay, the X right here is zero. And this x coordinate, so you wouldn't have to get the y coordinate. Here, the x would be three halves, and that's that makes sense because it's kind of right in the middle of one and two, right? Which is three halves. Okay, so that means our volume we can get by taking the integral from zero to three halves, and it's going to be our area formula, which is the three x minus two x squared squared. And then the thickness of this, right? The thickness of this square is gonna be our dx. So that's the thickness, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use the calculator to do um, the integration, right? And then we're gonna write the answer rounded to um, three decimal places, okay? All right, I should point out this. Now, sometimes we are gonna need to solve these on Delta Math. We're gonna need to solve these sometimes um, using our calculator because they're, they're unsolvable by hand by any kind of algebraic methods okay all right so let me put this in my calculator all right and we'll be back so from our graphing calculator screen we want to integrate so we'll press alpha and then window and then select number four for integrate and then from zero to three halves and then what we want to integrate we want to start it with a parenthesis and then 3x minus 2x squared. And then close the parentheses, and then we want to square that. Okay. And then we want, again, we want our thickness to be dx, and we're ready to press enter and get our, um, our volume. So it's 1.013. So let's go back and record that on our paper. So from our calculator, we get a volume of 1.013. Okay, and that's the volume for this. So for example two, again, we're gonna let region R be the area enclosed by the function f of x equals x squared. 
So that's the parabola, right? So let's label that one. So f of x is equal to x squared. And the horizontal line, y equals negative 3. So y equals negative 3. That's this horizontal line. So let's label that one. And the vertical lines, x equals 0 and x equals 2. So this right here is x equals 0. And this was x equals 2. OK. So here we go with the with what cross section we have. Okay, so if the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the x axis, x axis. So cross section perpendicular to the x axis is a rectangle. Okay, so we know it's a rectangle. So base times height, right? Okay, so we're gonna do the area of a area of a rectangle. And the area is the base times the height. Okay. Now they add some stuff here. Like I said earlier, okay. The height, height is half the length of its base. So that means for this particular one, right? H, our height, is one half the base. Okay. All right. So that means our area formula which is, sorry, I'm throwing pins around here. Area is base times height, right? It's gonna be the base times one half the base because that's the height, right? One half the base. So that means our area is one half base squared. So we're gonna to need to figure out the base, right? Now it's cross section perpendicular to the x-axis. So that means we're gonna draw these, and let me use my other pin here. We're gonna draw these so that it's perpendicular to the x-axis. And this is the length of that base right here. So this rectangle is gonna come up, right? And how high it's gonna come up is half of whatever this is right here, okay? Because that's what our height is gonna be, all right? Okay, so what is this? This is our base, right? Our base B. So that means for base B, that's gonna be, again, it's gonna be top minus bottom. So that would be our top curve is x squared minus our bottom curve, which is negative three. So that means our base here is x squared plus three. So right here, this base gets replaced with x squared plus three. So that means my area function a of x is one half times x squared plus three squared. Okay, now how about the volume, right? Where do we start making these? Well, it's, we're lucky because it says between the vertical lines, x equals zero. So we're gonna start creating them right here and we're gonna end it right here at x equals two. So we're gonna start making these rectangles right here and we're gonna stop making them right here at x equals two. Well, that means we, can, we don't need to solve any kind of system, right? We know that we're, the volume is gonna wind up being, all right? the integral from zero to two. And let me slide my integral up a little bit. Okay, so we're, our volume is gonna be from zero to two. Our area, which is one half times x squared plus three quantity squared, right? And then the thickness of each of these, right? Because we're going vertical with these, right? That means our thickness is gonna have to be dx. All right, now you can, if you want to, bring the one half out and then one half times the integral from zero to two of x squared plus three squared dx. Now you can write this either way, both are right. It's just, this might be a little bit easier to put in our calculator, okay? So let me go and I'm gonna put this in my calculator and then we'll come back. And then from this one, we want to start with the fraction one half. So alpha x to get the fraction bar and then one half because I'm you don't have to pull the one half out, but I'm going to. OK, and then we want to integrate that. So alpha window select number four and we're integrating from zero to two. And then what we're going to integrate is x squared plus three quantity squared. So x squared plus three and then quantity squared. And then again, the thickness is dx. 
and we get um, 20.2. So now let's go back and record that on our paper. So you can see from the calculator that our volume winds up being exactly 20.2. Actually, we wouldn't, we actually shouldn't put the approximate, it's actually exactly 20.2, right? Okay, let's go to example three. So let the region R be the area enclosed by the functions f of x is equal to three square roots of x and g of x equals three halves x. Okay, so three halves x is this line right here. So let's label that one. This one is g of x is equal to three halves x. And that means this right here, this curve right here is f of x is equal to three square roots of x. All right. So we've labeled all that, okay, if the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the X axis, okay, so we're going perpendicular to the X axis, so that's going to be, our, our shapes are going to be vertical, okay, is an isosceles right triangle, okay, so an isosceles right triangle. So the area of the isosceles right triangle, remember that the legs are both the same length, so the area would be one half base times height, right? But the base and the height are exactly the same. So that'd be base squared. Okay, so what is the base? So the base is this right here. Okay, because we're perpendicular to the x-axis, right? If we drew this, we'd be perpendicular to the x-axis. This is our base, and we're gonna draw a triangle that comes out. Now, it, the, the, the um, height, could either be on this side or this side. They don't specify what side. And it really doesn't matter because you'd have the same volume, okay? But what would happen is it's going to come up, right? It's going to come up either on this side or on this side and then kind of at a diagonal, okay? All right, so what is this base, right? Well, once again, it's going to be top minus bottom. So the top is three square roots of X. All right, and the bottom is three halves X. So minus three halves x. So that means the base is just simply three square roots of x minus three halves x. So that means over here to get our area, right, a of x, that's going to be one half the base, which in this case is three square roots of x minus three halves x. All right. And, and then uh, square, right? So we've got to square that. Okay, so that's our area, but now we've got to figure out, okay, so how are we going to figure out where we start making these, right? So we're going to start making these right here at this value. Now it looks like it's X equals zero, right? And we're going to stop it right here at this intersection, right? But that's what I just said. That's the key word right there at this intersection, right? What is that intersection? Now it looks like it's four, but is it four exactly? Or is it 3.99, right? So you got to go through and you got to solve for these intersection points, okay? So you can do it with the graphing calculator. You can also, this one in particular, you can also do by hand, okay? So how do we find these intersections? Well, you set them equal to each other, right? So you have three square roots of X is equal to three halves X, right? And we got to solve this for X, okay? Now, what I would do, there's different ways, different approaches that you could take. All right, but one thing that I would do is I like to clear out my fractions, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by this two, okay? So if I multiply this left-hand side by two, that's gonna be two times three. So that winds up giving us six square roots of X. And then this side, if I multiply by two, well, that's gonna get rid of the two, right? And I'm gonna be left with three X, right? Um, now, we gotta get to this X that's under a square root, right? So before I can get rid of the square root, I would get rid of the six. You don't have to do it that way, okay? But that's what I would do, okay? So um, what I would do next is I would probably, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna divide th by three, okay? Why three? Because I just know three goes into six, okay? So if I divide both sides by three, that's gonna give me two square roots of X is equal to X, all right? Again, there's other ways to solve this. So I want to make that really clear. There's other ways to solve this, all right? Um, the next thing I would do is I would probably at this point um, divide both sides by two, okay? 
So this is actually different than how I did it in class. Okay, so this would be the square root of x is equal to x over 2. And then what I would do next is I would square both sides. So when I square this side, I'm going to get x is equal to x over 2 squared. And then I need to square this. So x is equal to x squared over 4. And then what I, okay, so now let me slide this up a little bit. So you have x is equal to x squared over 4. And now you got, so the problem with the way I did it right now is you wind up with fractions, right? So what I would do next is again, clear this fraction out, right? So multiply both sides by four. So four X is equal to X squared. Okay, so now the way to solve this is you don't wanna divide by X, don't divide by X. You lose one of your solutions, okay? That's actually incorrect math, all right? So what you wanna do is instead move the four X over to the other side. So this becomes zero is equal to X squared minus 4x. And then because you have a GCF here, you can factor out an x. And so 0 is equal to x times x minus 4, which means x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 4. So like we said, it looked like from the graph, it was at x equals 0 and x equals 4. Okay, so that means the volume is equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of our area function, which is one half times three square roots of X minus three halves X squared. Now that's the area, that's not volume, right? Because I need the thickness of these, right? And so the thickness, okay? So the thickness of these isosceles right triangles is gonna be our DX. So that's the thickness that creates the volume that we need, right? So these are like paper thin, right try I saw these right triangles okay all right so one way you could do this is bring out the one half okay that's what I'm going to do when I put in the calculator okay so one half the integral from zero to four of three square roots of x minus three halves x and then squared and then dx okay so I'm going to go and I'm going to put this in my calculator and see what we get and then for this third example, again, I'm gonna bring the one half out, like I said, and then one divided by two, and then integrate, so alpha, uh, whoops, let me clear that out, let me start again. So one over two for the fraction, and then alpha window to get the function integrate, and then we wanna integrate this from, from zero to four, And for this one, we want to, again, start a parenthesis. Because we need to put a parenthesis here because this is the whole thing that you're integrating, right? And we can't put a square right, right here where my arrow is, or my cursor is. Okay, so three square roots of x. So three, and then second x squared to get the square root, and then x. And then we want to come out of that, right? So press the right arrow, and then minus, and then a fraction bar, three halves. and then x. And then close the parentheses because I need to square that. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna integrate from zero to four. And then our thickness, once again, is dx. And just going over, I'm just double checking to make sure I typed everything in correctly and press enter. And for this one, we get 2.400, okay? All right, let's go record that on our paper. So from our calculator, we see that we get the volume is approximately 2.400. Okay. All right, let's do this, the last example, okay? So let the region R be the area enclosed by the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus two. Okay, so that's this function right here. All right, so this is right here. This is x, f of x is equal to x cubed minus two and the horizontal line y equals negative one so here's my x-axis so this one right here is really y equals negative one okay and the y-axis so the y-axis is right here right at x equals zero okay 
if the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section per perpendicular to the X axis. So cross section perpendicular to the X axis is a semicircle with diameters extending through the region R. Okay, so we're gonna draw semicircles, right? Perpendicular to the X axis. So we're gonna go this way again, right? And so I'm gonna draw this. Now, what is this? This is right here, the diameter of our semicircle. So I'm gonna label that with a D, okay, for diameter. And so basically this is coming out of the page and it's curving back down to this, right? And so this is paper thin, right? And so, okay, so that's our diameter, right? So the area of a semicircle is one half pi R squared. But to get the R, right, I'm gonna to have to take the diameter and divide by two, right? So R is equal to our D divided by two. So back over here, I got to figure out what the diameter is, right? So the diameter is going to be equal to, well, how long is this, right? Well, how long that is, is you take the, again, the top curve minus the bottom curve. So that would be this negative one minus the bottom curve, which is X cubed minus two. So that gives us a diameter of negative one minus X cubed plus two, or a diameter of one minus X cubed, right? So, okay, so you could write this as negative X cubed plus one, or you could write it as one minus X cubed, doesn't really matter, okay? So that means over here, my radius is gonna be my di diameter, right? Divide by two. So that's gonna make this one minus X cubed over two, okay? And that, that is my radius. And so that means my area formula, A of X, right? If this was, if this is perpendicular to the Y axis, this would be A of Y, okay? So then this would be one half pi times my radius, which is one minus X cubed over two squared. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could clean this up. Now you could also write this as pi over two right here. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, where do I start making these? Well, I know my volume, I'm going to start right here at X equals zero. So I know my volume is going to equal an integral starting at zero. Okay. So what's the other thing I need to do? Well, I need to figure out what this intersection point now it looks like it's at one, but is it one? The only way you know for sure is to solve this, right? So we need to solve where this curve, x cubed minus two and y equals negative one, where those two meet, right? So I have x cubed minus two is equal to negative one. That would mean x cubed is equal to one. We need to cube root both sides and that would give me x equals one, which is what I thought, right? So we're gonna end the integral here at one. And I just realized you couldn't see that. Let me slide this up. All right, so here we go. So this is what I did. X cubed minus two is equal to negative one. Add two to both sides, right? And then cube root both sides, and that's how I get X equals one. So like, again, what number could you cube to get one? It's one, right? Okay, so now we're gonna put our area formula over in here. So this is gonna be our area. So one half pi times one minus X cubed over two, and I gotta square that quantity. Okay, so that's the area, right? That's area right now. It's not volume yet. It's not volume until I give it thickness, right? And the thickness here again is dx, okay? Now, another way to write this, you could put this in your calculator just like it is and it would be right, okay? I'm gonna bring this because one half and pi is a constant and I'm actually gonna bring it out as pi over two. So my volume winds up being pi over two times the integral from zero to one of and it would be one minus X cubed over two squared, and then our DX, okay? And let's go put that into our calculator and let's see what we get. And then for this one, we wanna start with a fraction pi over two. So to get pi, we have to press second and the exponent key to get pi over two and then integrate. So then alpha window number four, Integrate, and we want to integrate this one from zero to one. 
And then what we want to integrate is we're going to start with a parenthesis and then a fraction bar. And our numerator is 1 minus x cubed. And then our denominator is 2. And then we want to get out of the fraction and to close it. And then we want to square that fraction, right? So we have to press x squared. And then again, our thicknesses are dx, OK? And so this will give us a volume of 0 0.252. So let's go back and record that. And this will be our last example. So we wind up from our calculator with a volume of 0 0.252. Okay, and that's how you find the volume when you're given the cross sections, okay? The cross section areas, right? Okay, all right, that's it for today. Have a great day, guys.